Hello and welcome to the program. You're watching a very special edition of Whose Line Is It Anyway? Oh, no, wait, sorry. <laughs> You're watching Busting the Narrative. My mistake. What I meant to say was we may be one step closer to an answer to the question, whose line is it anyway, as there have been new developments in one of the great mysteries of all time. No, not who shot JR, or have little green men really been traveling across the galaxy with technology we can only dream of? only to then fluff their landings every single time they try and reach the Earth? No, not those mysteries. Rather, instead, who, and I mean, gosh, this is a stumper, could have brought a bag of cocaine into that most secure of facilities, the White House. Well, let's find out the latest, because there is more on this very special episode of Whose Line? No, wait, sorry, I keep messing that up. Busting the Narrative. Right, so again, it's a great mystery. I mean, I know who in the White House might have been at all interested in white powder, you know, that sort of stuff. Big mystery, and one the Secret Service seemed not to be all that interested in when they declared their investigation into that very mystery baggie closed a few weeks ago. And indeed, the other thing, too, that was more interesting, at least for our purposes, is that it didn't seem to be of much interest to the White House press corps either. And well, I guess that may well, very well have been because it did not involve the name. Trump. Go figure. Anyway, here's what's new. According to investigative journalist Susan Katz Keating, well, she's written that, quote, while the Secret Service publicly announced on July 13th that they had closed the investigation without identifying a suspect due to a lack of physical evidence, yeah, sure, I mean, come on, like they don't have fingerprints, DNA, and CCTV of every inch of the joint? Well, she continued to say that authorities were able to follow enough clues, I don't know, maybe it was Colonel Mustard in the library with a candlestick, to come up with a name. They were confident enough in their detective work to then go on and inform the commander-in-chief. Now, apparently... The sources told Katz that if you want the name, ask Joe Biden. That's what one of the sources told Katz Keating. Quote, he knows who it is. Well, I know what you're thinking here. You know, could be a certain guy whose name rhymes with uh, Bunter Hyden. But here is the crazy thing. Quote, it was someone within the Biden family orbit, they said, and it wasn't Hunter according to this source. Now, this is, of course, a reference to president's, uh, the president's adult son, who is, we know, an admitted recovering drug addict. And now, a Secret Service source said, quote, the Secret Service does not know who transported the small bag of cocaine into the White House, but they seem to know who was responsible. Again, really? Because even if it wasn't Hunter, who is seen here just sort of sniffling and acting weirdly on the White House balcony watching the July 4th fireworks, who could it have been? There aren't a huge number of possibilities, of course, which makes, makes this whole thing all the more intriguing, especially if, just to speculate, it was another Biden who brought it in for Hunter. After all, it has been suggested that the mystery baggie was left in a location where it was ultimately able to have been found, and that could have been a drop-off point. So the mystery now thickens. Yet, despite the mystery, and despite the fact that if some other family was occupying the White House, this would be absolutely apocalyptic news, no one in the media seems to care too much. Which again, as I have suggested before, is because of the lack of general journalistic curiosity when it comes to all things Biden, 
because the media, having been propping them up for so long, is now complicit in keeping them in power. And in this, we have to go back now to 2016 for a bit of compare and contrast, because you recall in 2016, Trump had the sniffles during a debate. <laughs> Comedian Stephen Colbert had fun with it. Donald Trump has questioned Hillary's health repeatedly. And I gotta say, there was one possible health scare on stage tonight. Trump sounded like he was fighting off a cold uh, with cocaine. We have to renegotiate our trade deals in Leicester, Mexico. <laughs> Former presidential candidate Howard Dean went even further. So following a bunch of sniffles, Governor Dean, you wrote on Twitter, notice Trump sniffing all the time. Coke user? Why did you go there? Well, you can't make a diagnosis over the t television. I would never do that. But he has some interesting, th that is actually a signature of people who use cocaine. I I'm not suggesting that, that Trump does, but. Well, you are suggesting did, it actually in a tweet. Well, no, I'm suggesting we think about it. And here's the crazy thing. The reliably lefty Atlantic magazine said that if this were Clinton who was sniffing, quote, wild speculation would abound. Well. It did, but actually, no, no longer, even with an actual bag of cocaine. Now we will never, we, we never know the story. And I don't know. Does it matter? Maybe not, except to the extent that the public is served by a media, or rather not served by a media, that only pursues the story when it supports their own narrative, which is what, of course, we're busting here every single week. Thanks for watching. I am James Morrow. And to support this channel, please like, Share and subscribe below, and I'll see you next time for more Busting the Narrative. Bye-bye.